I don't know what it is about the first day of the month, so I hope he makes this a habit. But anyway, he did the All same right. thing, or something along the same lines, the first, of the, the first day of this month. And I want to share with you something that started out as a dream and ended as a vision. But before I get there, I want to share some scripture with you. And I may not hold you too long, or you might be here till 2 o'clock. I don't know, or you may have to leave me preaching. But in Acts the 16th chapter and the 6th verse, the Bible says, Now when they had gone throughout, how do you pronounce that word, Brother Bill? <laughs> Phrygia, that sounds good enough, doesn't it? We won't have to say it anymore throughout this sermon, so Phrygia sounds good to me. In the region of Galatia, and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. Now think about that for a minute. You might have read that scripture and just kept going right on by and didn't even realize what it says. But what it says, Brother Sleece, is they were forbidden, talking about the disciples, they were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. Think about that statement. What a heart-wrenching thought today that the Holy Spirit would not allow them to preach the Word to those people. Come on. For some reason or another, God had shut up His Word to those people. Right. Amen? That's what it says. Yes. Amen? Right. <clears throat> I don't know what the mess that some of you out there might be reading says, but mm -hmm. the Bible says, the Word of God says, mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost had forbidden them to preach the word in Asia. What a terrible place. A place where the Lord will not release His word. His life-giving, life-changing, all-powerful, never-changing word. For what reason? Well, the Bible doesn't give any indication of why that the Holy Ghost would not allow them to preach to these people. And no matter how many Bible scholars you read, you come away with different thoughts because a lot of them have different opinions on this. Right. Amen? True. So no matter which one you read, you come away thinking, you know, something else, maybe somebody hearing someone else's opinion, someone else's idea. Right. Was it because no one there would accept it? Maybe. Amen? Jesus would tell them in Matthew, the 7th chapter, the 6th verse, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, Neither cast ye your pearls before the swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. So maybe the Lord knew they wouldn't accept it. I don't know. I'm not saying that for a fact. I'm just telling you maybe that's one of the reasons. I don't know. Amen? Was it because something that was going on in that place where they had been cut off from the Word of God because of that? Whether you believe it or not, sin still separates you from God. Amen? Amen. You might read the pages of the Holy Book and say, well, that's the way things used to be. Yeah, yeah you sin for a while and find out and you see things still that way today. Amen? Amen? True. The more you sin, the further away you get from God. Amen. The more you close up His Word for you. Right. He ain't going to bless your mess. That's right. Amen? True. He ain't going to bless your mess. Come on. None of us perfect today, but sin will still take you farther than you want to go. Keep you longer than you want to stay and cost you more than you ever intended to pay. Amen. Come on. So could it be because that something was going on there? Mm -hmm. Jesus would tell them in Matthew 6, the fourth chapter, a prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. And the Bible says that in this place, Jesus could there do no mighty work. Save him that he laid hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. Mm. And he marveled because... Now you want to know why Jesus couldn't do anything big there? He marveled because of their unbelief. Right. And, he went around, and he went around about the villages teaching. So maybe it was because of their unbelief that the Word of God had been shut up. True. Maybe it was because of sin that the Word of God had been shut up. Do you remember one of the places that it mentioned there in the book of Acts was the region of Galatia. Do you remember what the Apostle Paul said to the Galatian people in Galatians, the third chapter? O oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath evidently set forth crucified among you, hath been evidently set forth and crucified among you. Wow. So we know that Paul would write that to the Galatian people. Wow. 
And we know that probably that was that's not something that started overnight. That's probably a root of bitterness and evilness and wickedness oh. that had been there for a long time. So maybe that's one of the reasons why God's word had been shut up to them. Amen. So we can figure that, you know, there was something going on. For some reason, God had. The most important thing to, today to realize is that He had shut His Word up. Right. The Holy Ghost had given lockjaw to the men of God, not allowing them to preach in that place. Right. Not allowing His Word to come forth. I don't know about you, but that sounds like a pretty scary place to be. Amen. Amen. A place where God's Word is not allowed. Brother, I'm not talking about man stopping it. Yeah. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost saying don't preach here. Yeah. I can't even think. That's hard for me to fathom. Really. Yeah. But the Holy Spirit had forbidden them. Yeah. It was a place where the Word was shut up. Amen? That's right. It was a place where the Word had been shut up. For whatever reason, the spiritual skies had been shut up there and there was a famine of the Word. Right. Amen? Did you see that this morning? These men of God, full of the Word, not allowed to share it in that place. In other words, at this time, in this place, the Word had been shut off to these people. There's an indication of something like this in a scripture that we visited not too long ago in the sermons that we've been preaching on being faithful. When Paul would write to Timothy, turn in your Bible to 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. Paul gives some indication to Timothy here of a time that is coming when the Word would not be preached or whenever the Word would not have free course, as it were. It's a very familiar passage to you. We've talked about it a lot lately, and I'm sure you've heard it throughout the years if you've been in church. 2 Timothy 4 and 1. He says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at His appearing and in His kingdom. Preach the Word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Mm -hmm. Now listen to the next verse. For the time will come. In other words, there's, time, there's a time that's coming. Yeah. Paul's telling Timothy, preach the word now. Because there's coming a time. What's he say? For there will come a time when they will not endure sound doctrine. Yeah. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. Yeah. And they shall be turned unto fables. Yeah. But watch them in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of evangelists. Make full proof of thy ministry. Why do you have time, Timothy? Because there's a time coming when you won't have this Amen. freedom. There's a time coming whenever the Word will not be, will not be allowed to have free course by man Certainly, we're seeing that in other countries. Right. But there's coming a day when God Himself will cut it off. Amen. Amen. True. Oh, wait a minute, preacher. I'm fixing to give you scripture for it. Amen. 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 I already gave you one there in the book of Acts. Do you think that that's the only time that that's happened? Do you think that it's never going to happen again? That was just peculiar to those people? No. There's coming a time when there will be a famine. A famine, Brother Beal, not of bread, not of water, Sister Vicki but of the hearing of the Word of God. Wow. Amen? Oh, my goodness. He said, for the time will come, Timothy. Go with me to the Old Testament, Amos the 8th chapter. Amos the 8th chapter. I like Amos. Amos, sometimes... I feel like him because he was told, brothers, please, won't you go preach somewhere else? All right. Amen. We don't want to hear what you have to say. Won't you go preach someplace else? We don't care if you preach, just don't preach it to us. Yeah. Amos, the 8th chapter, and the 11th verse. Listen to what the Word of God says. It says, Behold, the days come. <clears throat> saith the Lord God, that I will send... Now listen to the wording of this. We're in Amos, the 8th chapter, and the 11th verse. Behold, the days come. Sounds a little bit like the wording that Paul used in Timothy when he says, for the time will come. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send... Do you hear that? I will send. 
God speaking, Brother Dave. Right. I will send a famine in the land. Not a famine of bread. Not a thirst of water. But of hearing the words of the Lord. Right. I will close up the book. Right. Amen? Come on. See, it's open right now. Yeah. You may not want to hear it. You may not want to deal with it. You may want to throw it to the side. On. But one day, God will close the book. Right. And then you'll wish you'd have listened. Amen. Amen. Then you will wish. Then you will run and try to find that preacher that you ignored. Yeah. Then you will run and try to find that preacher that whenever you saw him in Walmart, you, you went down the other aisle because you didn't want to have to deal with his preaching. Come on. When he knocked on your door to visit, you act like you wasn't at home. Amen. Because yeah. you didn't want to hear what he had to say. You ridiculed him. You called him a, a, a fanatic. Yeah. But there's coming a day... You'll go see if you can find him. Absolutely. Hey, Brother Willie, how do you know that? Listen to what the Word of God says. During this time when the heavens is shut up, the Word of God is closed, shut off. The Bible says in verse 12, we're still in Amos, the 8th chapter, and they shall wander from sea to sea and from the north to the east. They shall run to and fro. What are they doing? To seek the Word of the Lord and shall not find it. Did you hear that? They will seek for the word. They will run to and fro looking for the word that they had rejected. That they had ridiculed. Amen. There will come a day that many of the atheists out there that poke fun at us Bible thumping, Bible belt believing Christians. They'll come running to look for us. Exactly. They'll come running to find us. Yes, sir. They'll be looking for the word and they won't be able to find it. Right. Just like there in the book of Acts where the word of God had been shut up. Mm. There will be a famine. The heavens, the spiritual heavens will be closed up and God will shut the book. Right. And i got news for you. What God shuts, no man can open. Amen. Amen. That's true. Oh, my goodness. I don't know about you this morning, but this does something to me. Amen. They shall wander from sea to sea right. and from north even to the east. Yes. They shall run. Do you know how hard it is to get people to listen to you in the day that we live in? To preaching. Oh, they want to hear the singing. You can pack them out if you get in one of the big singing groups. Yeah. If you get in one of the southern gospel groups that are big on the charts today, yeah. you can you can pack out your church house. Right. But when you just have some good old fashioned, some good old fashioned tone stomping preaching, Brother Bill, it's you can't find enough of them to shake a stick at. Amen. Because yeah. they don't want to hear the word of God. Exactly. There'll come a day when they want to hear it. Absolutely. They'll be hungry for it. They'll long for it. Their soul will ache for it. They will run to and fro. They will seek the word, but they shall not find it. Amen. The Bible says, In that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. Why are young people in the shape they're in today? Because of a lack of the word. They that swear by the sin of Samaria and say, Thy God, O Dan, liveth. And the manner of Bersheba liveth. And then it says, Even they shall fall and never rise up again. In that day, what day? Now remember, we're talking about God's Word being cut off. All right. Amen. We're talking about a time coming whenever God's Word will be cut off. All right. <clears throat> Jesus would tell them, I must work the works of Him that sent me. While it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. Brother Fleece, he's not talking about your job up the road here. He's not talking about your work with your hands. He's talking about the work of God. Right. There will come a time. Night is coming. Amen. Somebody say, night cometh. Night. night is coming when God's Word will be closed up. That's why we need to preach while we have the freedom to preach. That's why we need to stand while we still have the ability to stand. Amen. That's why we need to share while we still have the, the chance to share Jesus with others for night is coming. Yeah. The work, the preaching, the message, we must preach. Amen. We must. Jeremiah said it's like fire. Yeah. Shut up in my bones. I, he said he, he told himself, I'm going to sit down. I'm gonna, why did he say that? He's discouraged with people. Wow. I can relate to that this morning. Amen. Wow. I get discouraged with people. Wow. But it wouldn't do me any good to say, God, I'm not going to preach anymore. Because he would say, oh, yes, you are. Amen. Get up and go do it. Amen. It's like a fire shut up in my bones. Amen. Amen. I've been feeding on it since I was five. I've been preaching it since I was 19. And I've never been more stirred up than I am today to preach his word. Because I believe night is coming. Yeah. 
Yes, sir. There's a famine coming when the word of God will be shut off. Amen. The spiritual heavens will be closed. Come on, preach. That brings me Absolutely. to the dream that I had. I want to try to share it with you. I typed it out so I wouldn't leave out any details. <laughs> it started out as a dream early February the 1st. It was early in the morning. And in my dream, we were at our home and we could hear the tornado sirens going off. Sound like more than one. And we were blaring out. And I thought, oh, there's a tornado coming. You could feel the wind as it blew. And I went to the back door and I opened up the back door with the bill and I looked to the right and I didn't see anything. And I looked to the left. And probably no more than three feet away from me was the tail of what I thought was a big tornado. Almost close enough that I could reach out and touch it. And I thought, well, this is it. That thing's too close. We're not going to make through this one. Amen. And as I began to pray and say the name of Jesus, you know how you do when a storm's coming? Yes. Amen. Even those folks that don't believe in prayer, do some praying when tornadoes hit your way. Amen. Yeah. Those people don't have time for God, but when the storm hits, oh God! Yeah. Amen. Come on. So I begin to pray. And I begin to lift up the name of Jesus. And I begin to call out on the name of Jesus. And it, the, the tornado began to move. And it moved a little closer. Yeah. And it began to lift. Brother David, as I stood there, it was about eye level, the tail of it was. Come on. And I thought, you know, as it began to lift, I thought, well, it's going to go on over. Yes. And I thought that it was going to go on over us and, mm -hmm. and it was over. But by this time, it's close enough now that I could reach out and touch it. All right. And I'm still thinking that it's a tornado. And I'm thinking, this is it. We won't survive. Yeah. This is where the dream ended. I woke up and I just thought, my goodness, that's a pretty rough dream. I'm glad I woke up. Yes, sir. I got up and I went and I got a drink of water and I went and I laid back down. And when I laid back down, I didn't go back to sleep. But this is the rest of the what I was dreaming. I now saw in a vision. I'm standing at the back door again and the tornado is at eye level. It's close enough now, Brother Rodney, that I can reach out and I can touch it. The bottom of it is right there in front of me. But now I'm thinking... That doesn't look as much as like a tornado as it does a whirlwind. Yeah. And as I stood there, I lifted up my right hand <clears throat> to touch the bottom of it. And when I did, I began to go up through the middle of this whirlwind. Mm -hmm. And as I began to ascend up through this thing, I could see the sides circling around me. I was... I wasn't being tossed about. I wasn't being turned. But the, the thing that I was in as I ascended up was circling. I could see it going around and around. And it was as if it, though, as if, if, if it was made out of, of smoky black clouds. But it just circled and circled. And I began to go up and up. And now I can see that I'm nearing the top. And I can see above that a blue sky. And when I got up to the top of it, it's still circling around me. And as I came up out of the top of this thing, I was looking down as far as I could see. It was like black clouds. And I'm here suspended. Here's the black clouds. Here I am, and I'm not standing on anything. There's nothing there to stand on, but I'm suspended above the black clouds. Above me, Sister Vicki, I can see the bluest, clearest, transparent sky that I've ever seen. I've never seen blue like that before, Brother David. All right. It's the prettiest, most beautiful. I can't, even, I can't even tell you what it looked like today. Yeah. But as I look down across these clouds, as far as I can see, I began to see how that they, they looked less and less black and stormy. And how that they seemed more transparent. They seem to be losing their the blackness and changing colors until I realize that now I'm looking out across as far as I can see is water. It's as if it's a great sea that I'm that I'm looking across. The sky above me, as blue as I've ever seen, a sea where there is no end. Oh my my my! Hallelujah! Oh God! A sea as far as I can see. Amen. Now as I'm standing there, suspended, standing on nothing. With the sea below me and the blue sky 
above me. I heard a voice that said, here, take the book. Listen to me this morning. And I noticed that the voice didn't say take this book. It said take the book. And the voice spoke again and said take the book and preach the book. Yeah. And I took the book, the Word of God. And I began to preach. And as I was preaching, I could feel an anointing like I never felt before, Brother Bill. It was as if I was plugged into an electricity that I never that I never felt. And it surged through my body as I preached the Word of God. And I began to see across this water, I began to see people begin to come up out of the water as I was preaching the Word of God. It wasn't all of them in one group, but it was one here and one there and one over there from all across this sea that I was looking at. <clears throat> As I was preaching, and people were beginning to rise up out of the sea as I preached the word. And something caught my attention from the right hand. And I looked out, and way off in the distance, Sister Nancy, I could see something. It was as if it was, it didn't really look like a cloud. It looked more like a shadow that was rising up from the horizon. It was far, far, it was far away, but far, not so far that I couldn't see it. And it was a cloud. It, I thought, it, it, I didn't really think it was a cloud. I thought it was a shadow. And before I could say anything, the voice said to me, It's the shadow of night. For night cometh. Oh, think about that this morning. Let that sink into your. Spirit, let that sink into your spirit this morning. My, my first thought was it was a shadow. Before I could say anything, the voice said, Yes, son, the shadow of night. For night cometh. And then the voice repeated it said, Night cometh. And then the voice said, well, Work while it is day, for night cometh when no man shall work. Night's coming. Amen. Night's coming. Right. It's close enough you can, it's, I don't know when, but it's close enough you can see it in the distance. Absolutely. Amen. Night is coming. Amen. Night is coming. Yes, sir. Preach the word while you can because yeah. night's coming. Yeah. Preach to the people while you can because <clears throat> night's coming. Amen. Proclaim the word of God while you can because night is coming. Right. And the Lord told me to share this. He told me that as I, as I, as I begin to weep and lay on my face before him after this, he told me, he said, This this was a this was one on one with you because I showed it to you, but it was not a simply a personal word. He told me to share it with as many ministers as I could. Because it's time for the view that we lay aside the fads and the gadgets and man's theolo the the theology and begin to preach the book. Amen. Preach the word. Amen. Because night is coming. And we won't be able to preach. And when night comes, the book will be shut. And no matter whether we want to or not, we won't be able to preach. Our mouth will be closed up. There will be a famine in the land for the Word of God. They will want the Word, but they will not find it. Amen. Night's coming, Brother David. Exactly. Night's coming. Yes, sir. Night cometh when no man shall work. But he didn't just tell me to share it with the preachers. Come on. Because you need to know that night is coming. Yes, sir. You need to know that night cometh. Right. Amen. True. This message is not just for the preacher that needs to realize it's time to lay aside all of the fancy fads of the world. Amen. Yeah. And take up the book and preach the Word of God while we have time to take the Word to the world. While the door is open, we must go forth because night cometh. But it's not just for the preacher. Listen to me out there. It's for the Christian that is playing around with God. They are lackluster in their commitment to the Lord and their faithfulness to Him. They are lackluster in their prayer life. It's almost non-existent. They are lackluster in their study of the Word. Their support for His work. Oh, they support it when they can afford it. You can't afford not to. Amen? Because night cometh. We need today to witness because night cometh. We need to reach out because night cometh. We need to preach because night cometh. The doors of the church need to stay open because night is coming. Amen. Night cometh. 
And it's time for the church to arise, the sleeping giant, and be the witness that she's supposed to be, brother, at least because night cometh. Absolutely. And last but certainly not least, this message is for those that are not ready, that have keep putting off till tomorrow what they should have done years ago. Oh. Those that don't have time for God, right. that don't have time for His Word, that don't even believe there is a God. Yeah. Time's running out. Amen. Night cometh. True. Night cometh. Yes, sir. Night, the door is going to close. Right. And when God closes it, nobody can be, can be able to open it. Yes, sir. It's time for you that have put things off for years that you should have taken care of. Wow. It's time for you that love pleasure more than you love God. Wow. It's time for those of you that don't have time for God that think, well, I'll get right before I die. It's time for those of you who have not knelt down in your heart and given your life to Jesus and opened the door of your life to Him. Night cometh for you. Night's coming. Amen. Night is coming. Yes, sir. Don't let the sun set on your soul today and you not be ready. Amen. Don't wait till it's too late. Do you know how many souls in hell today? Wish they hadn't have said, I'll get right tomorrow. Amen. You see, that's all the devil has to do. He doesn't have to get you to go out and be a drunk. Right. He doesn't have to get you to go out whoremongering. He doesn't have to get you to go out somewhere and do some awful sin for the bill. All he has to do is get you to wait. Put it off till tomorrow. Sure, God's real. Sure, you need to accept Jesus. Just don't do it today. Yeah. Don't do it today. Come on. Until finally you're in the pit of hell and you have no more tomorrows. Right. Until finally you run to the church but there's nobody there. You long for the preaching of the Word of God but the Bible lays closed on the altar and the death and the sound of the preaching has died in the air. What then? Amen. What happens when night has overtook your life and God's Word, His heavens have been shut up? Come on, tell what then? Don't put it off. None of us are promised tomorrow. There will be no altar call in hell. Amen. These people that are going to seek for the word of the bill, they're going to wish they had the opportunity to sit through another altar call. Right. Brother Sleece, they're going to wish that that old crazy Sleece Butler that's always talking about Jesus, they're going to wish they could find you. They're going to wish, Brother Dave, that they could find you to hear a little bit more about this Jesus. Amen. They're going to wish today that they had to clench their hand on the back of the pew and their knuckles turned red and said, I'm not going to go to that altar today. I'll go some other time. They're going to wish they hadn't got up out of their pew and left the church house while the preacher was giving the invitation. They're going to wish they had one more chance. Yes, sir. You got it. But night has came. True. The Word has been shut up. The Spirit has been cut off and it's right. too late. They will search. They will seek after the Word. They will not find it. For night cometh. <clears throat> night cometh. Amen. Oh, Brother Billy, I've heard that all my life. I've heard that Jesus was coming. I've heard that the end of the world was coming. Yeah. I hear it all the time and I'm still here. Come on. Let me ask you this. Not because there's any unbelief in my life, because I believe any moment the eastern skies could split and Jesus could step out on the clouds of glory. Call me a fool if you want to, but when Jesus comes, you can call me gone. Amen? I don't care what the world says. I don't care what religion says. I don't care what the church says. I still believe Jesus is coming back. Amen. Let me ask you this today. Suppose He don't. How many people in here have been to a funeral not too long ago? How many people in here have stood beside the caskets of loved ones and had to tell them goodbye. Right. Well, let me ask you this out there today. You're so sure Jesus ain't coming back. Suppose that this night I'm talking about don't come while you're here, but sooner or later the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die and after that a judgment. What are you going to do when you die? What are you going to do if you're not here tomorrow I can't tell you when Jesus is coming back for a certainty, but I can tell you you're fixing to die for a certainty. All right. Sometime or another. True. I know none of us want to think about it. We think it's way down the road. It may not be. It may be around the next bend. Amen. It may be just around the corner for us. True. You folks may be weeping and sobbing over my casket before the week's out. Oh, Brother Willie, don't talk like that. 
Listen, it's a fact. That's right. And behoove every one of us, Brother Bill, to make sure we're ready and right with God. Yes, sir. If you don't know anything else today, you need to know that your heart is right with God. Amen. Amen. That's true. For night cometh. Amen. Night cometh. Right. And the word will be shut off. True. And you'll seek and you'll look and you won't be able to find, find it. it. Jesus said there'll be tribulation like never has been before nor ever shall be again. Mm -hmm. I still believe those words. Yes. Amen. Amen. Brother Hinton used to stand in the pulpit under the anointing of God and he would say, I believe that I'll be here when Jesus comes. Mm -hmm. Amen. I believe I'll live to see Jesus come. He also said, if I die before then, don't bring me back. Amen. <laughs> don't try to revive me. Maybe that's why the Lord let him die out there while he was hunting. Wasn't nobody around to breathe no more life into him. Amen. Right. And he said, I'll, I'll, I'll be here when Jesus comes. He, he's not. He's already passed on. He's been with the Lord for several years now. Amen. Amen. And we may die before Jesus comes. Right. But either way, he's coming. Yes, sir. And either way, we're going to die sooner or later. Guaranteed. There's no question about that. The question is, is are we ready? Are you ready today? Amen. Are you ready for the night that is coming? Yes. Amen. Come on. The Bible says, seek the Lord while He may be found. That lets me know there's coming a time when you won't be able to find Him. They'll run to the rocks and call for the rocks to fall on them, but it won't happen. Right. They'll run and they'll seek for God. The God that they ridiculed. The God that they crucified. The God that they, they, they cursed and they didn't believe in. Right. They will seek and not find. Amen. But the good news is today that we still have a chance. Yes, we right. still have time. Right. If you're out there and you're not right with God today, today is your day of salvation. Right. Don't put it off till tomorrow. You may not have a tomorrow. Don't wake up in hell tomorrow wishing that you'd have got right with God today. Come on. If you don't know Him, make things right with Him. Amen. Amen. Sure. And listen to me, Christian. Don't just assume that you'll listen to the preacher next week. Get all the Word that you can while you can get it because night cometh when the Word will be shut up. Will be... And we're seeing it a little bit, little by little throughout this land. And that, that, but what we're seeing right now, see, is not so much God's doing as it is man's, Brother Slees. Amen. Right. We talk about the lack of Word in the land today. Most of that is because of, of a backslidden, some of them not even saved preachers, amen, that are trying to lead flocks that don't even know their right hand from their left hand. All they know is the good is, is, uh, is self-help and all of that self-centered stuff. Amen. Yeah. So we're seeing a lack of Word today, but that's not God's doings. Come on. That's man's doings. Amen. But there'll come a day when God closes the book. That's right. Amen? True. How awful that is to think about the Word of God being cut off. Yes. God wants us to know today, night's coming. Get ready. Make sure you're ready. If you're a preacher out there, make sure you're preaching the Word because night's coming. Yes. If you're a Christian out there today and you're not where you need to be, you're not doing what you need to do, God's saying get ready because night is coming. If you're lost out there today, if you're unsaved, God's warning you, get ready. Don't die in your sin. There's no coming back from hell. There is no escape from hell. Ask the rich man. Amen. He wanted to come out of there, but he couldn't. Amen. Hallelujah. Get ready. Night coming. Night yes, sir. cometh. Someone else this morning have something before.